It was 30 years ago that the Texas Parks and Wildlife television series, originally known as Made in Texas, got its start. Gwen Zucker is one of more than 30 producers, photographers, writers, and editors who have contributed to the show since its first broadcast in 1985. Hello, I'm Gwen Zucker, and I've worked with the television program for about 12 years. And my favorite story is Cattle Lake. And the reason it's my favorite story is because it's such an incredibly beautiful place. The people that I met and talked to there were able to share that with me, and then just being out there and seeing that land and feeling that peace was just a wonderful experience. So I hope those that are watching can feel some of that peace that's right here in Texas's backyard. Here on Caddo Lake, on the edge of Northeast Texas and Louisiana, the borders between man and nature perish. Trees in Cattle Lake were here at the fall of the land and to make this a lake. And every time a tree get destroyed, I think, in Cattle Lake, it's just like a man. Never nothing to take his place. Lake is not a typical lake in the sense that you can come to its shore and admire a great and serene mass of water, but rather it is a submerged forest, a maze of channels, lakes, bayous, and oxbows formed by islands and breaks of cypress trees. Within each part, there is a unique world. There is a great diversity of life in Caddo Lake. From the depth of the waters to the top of the trees, a tremendous number of creatures go about their daily lives. And each of them plays a specific role in keeping the balance of nature. And in this wet forest, among these common species, many rare ones exist. In 1993, Caddo Lake was recognized as a wetland of international importance, one of only 13 such sites in the United States. Caddo Lake did not always exist here. Centuries ago, this was a land of creeks and swamps inhabited by Caddo Indians. These people from a centuries-old culture hunted the woods, grew corn in the fertile soils. But their world was to change. For decades, if not centuries, nature was working nearby, toppling trees into the waters of the Red River, forming a great wooden raft nearly 80 miles long. Some archaeologists believe this massive debris pushed the waters of the river back upstream, forcing it to break its banks and flood the Caddo landscape. When the water receded, where once small streams meandered, lakes filled the landscape. The Caddo Indians called them soda. One of these was the lake we now call Caddo. For several more decades, the Great Raft remained a barrier to outsiders, cutting off the lakes from settlement and limiting navigation on the Red River. Captain Henry Miller Shreve of the Army Corps of Engineers, after whom Shreveport was later named, began removing the log jam in 1833. In two years, the lake was open to navigation, exposing the Caddo landscape to settlement. As quickly as the boom had come, it was gone. 
In 1873, to ease navigation on the Red River itself, the Corps of Engineers dynamited the last of the log jam containing the waters of the lake. The water level began to drop. Soon, navigation of large steamboats was impossible. Although commerce seemed to fall with the water, it did not end. All the while, beneath her placid waters lay another boon for the region. The first overwater drilling uh, that ever ever occurred in this universe, this world of ours, occurred right here on Caddo Lake. Gulf Oil had a camp on the banks of the lake for decades until it was no longer profitable to pump. And another boom passed. Now Caddo is contained by a weir rather than a log jam. Although the steamboats have disappeared and many of the rigs have stopped pumping, the lake remains and the waters continue to mold the lives of those who grow up on her banks. My dad would go out and catch the big fish, and we raised chickens. We had a big garden, and we even raised potatoes that we served as french fries in the restaurant. I remember some of the fish stories that um, people would tell when they would come in off the lake. I would be helping my mom prepare food to serve in the diner. And I would listen to the stories, but nobody ever caught a fish like my daddy. Once you've grown up on Caddo Lake, there are some things you never forget. Every time there was a big gathering between Jesus Christ and his people. You'll always find him somewhere about the water. Whenever whenever you get bored, lonely, sad, come down and take a look at the water, where you can make your best communication with Jesus Christ. Thank you.